Hello and welcome to this edition of Piano Pandemictivities. We're back once again at the little harpsichord realizing a partimento. And uh, this one is particularly challenging. It's GJ1347 and it's quite long. It's over 80 measures. It's really like a little sonata movement. Um, so there's a lot to think about. We won't go into every detail in this video, but just an overview of some of the challenges. Uh, the, the first challenge is that some of the notes, in fact many of the notes in the bass, are not structural. They don't indicate harmony. They are decorative and, and they connect between the important structural notes in the bass. So for example, the tied bass from the first to the second measure, anyone trained in partimento who sees a tied bass is immediately expecting the following note to drop. And in this case it actually leaps up and, and drops after that. So we know that that upward bass note is decorative. It's actually an escape tone, if you want to use that terminology, and does not determine harmony. The A and the G sharp help determine harmony. The B is decorative. So we need to learn to recognize the difference, um, the level of influence that different bass notes have depending on how they move. Uh, so this happens throughout the piece, this tie with the surprise, um, the fake upward motion. Um, it's like when Chuck Norris turns away from you, um, he's actually going to come around the other direction and roundhouse kick you in the face. Um, so you have to watch out. When the bass goes up, it's actually going to turn around and drop later and kick you in the face. So you want to be ready for that. Such a terrible metaphor for making music, Chuck Norris kicking you in the face. Sorry, I retract it. Uh, so that's an important one. Um, also, we of course have to um, look at the idea that the tied bass is woven together with another type of bass motion. Um, and this, this second type of bass motion is um, falling by a fourth and then rising a second and falling by a fourth. This is known as Romanesca. Um, and and uh, to have it morphed together with a tied bass is tricky and a little bit deceptive on the part of Fenaroli who wrote this partimento. So you have to pick out what he's getting at and how he's uh, creating this puzzle that you have to solve. So that's a big one. Uh, then uh, another part that's really interesting, in measure 27, we suddenly have this G natural um, going to the F sharp. And uh, this is more typical of the later Gallant style, this particular motion. Um, it sounds more like Mozart or uh, Galuppi or uh, Durante or Fenaroli or something like that, less like J.S. Bach or Handel. Um, so we have to be aware of the harmony that accompanies that. That takes us into B minor for a while. Uh, interestingly, uh, what, what's interesting to me, the reason I say this little thing is set up like a sonata is that um, you have the, the main opening idea at the beginning. You have it returning in measure 55. Um, particularly after this dramatic pause, this dramatic rest. So is that a sonata recapitulation? Well, what other elements of sonata do we have? Um, it's, w one is that near the beginning of the sonata we go into the dominant. So measures 10, 11, 12 and, and following we've moved into the dominant key. Uh, then uh, one of the things that often happens in the um, development section is that we go into the minor dominant. Uh, this is a, a tendency of a certain era of, of sonata writing. And so we see that in measure 27, uh, th this suggestion of E minor, which very quickly moves then into B minor, um, which is not the minor dominant. But you have a little bit of suggestion of a, of a cadence in E minor, so that also is uh, somewhat typical of the um, Sonata. Then we have harmonic wandering, which is also typical of development. We're in B minor for a while, uh, and then we move toward F sharp minor. So we've got some harmonic instability, and in 44, 5, 6, 7, 48, 49, we come up toward this apparently a, a really big cadence in F sharp minor, but it's um, the rug is pulled out from under us by this tied bass motion, which is very, very dramatic and exciting uh, right there. Uh, and again, kind of typical of the uh, culmination of tension in a development section. And then shortly after that, we get this um, recapitulation. 
After that, we stay pretty close to home harmonically, just a few accidentals, and a, and a long, long confirmation of the home key in the last two systems. So I would say maybe this particular partimento, in addition to showing uh, bass motions and other things typical of partimento, is also like a little proto-sonata idea, little sonata movement idea. So um, you'll hear some of the decisions I made as I realized this. Um, I will uh, put my own copy of the partimento where I made notes on it uh, as an image here so you can uh, see what I came up with. Um, there, are, there are many different ways to harmonize this uh, and some choices I considered before I settled on, on what I did. So you can think about those. Uh, lastly, for those of you who are studying and teaching partimento, I, I learned to play this in a partimento duel with a student of mine. So um, I found this to be a very fruitful and interesting way of teaching during the pandemic is to send each other partimento realizations back and forth so that uh, we can compare and learn and, and discuss what's going on. So you're welcome to spy on this lesson with my student and I hope that you enjoy hearing this partimento. Now I'll play it all the way through for you.